This is Drew Benhair reporting live from the Discreet Town Medical Clinic. The town is grappling with an outbreak of hypertangulosis, a condition which makes hair tangled and gnarled. As you can see, the lion is out the door. Let's go to Dr. Sarah Strait here for the latest. Doctor, how is your clinic coping with this horrifying outbreak? Please, everybody, stay calm. Hypertangulosis is treatable and does not cause long-term health issues. We treat it at our clinic with a special conditioner, which usually cures the disease immediately. It's not always effective, though. We have limited capacity and can only treat 10 patients per day. We're working to address these issues. Thank you, doctor. Good luck, and please keep us posted. We go now to Professor Joe Blitzstein from the Harvard Statistics Department to tell us more about how to make sense of this disturbing situation. Professor, can you tell us how effective the treatment is? Based on the limited data we have so far, we estimate that the treatment has a 60% chance of success and a 40% chance of failure. Let me get this straight. So each day you expect that 6 out of the 10 treated patients will be cured? On average, 6 out of the 10 will be cured. But there could easily be more than 6 or fewer than 6 on a particular day. We have to consider the whole distribution. You mean, who distributes the treatment to the clinic? We should try to find out as much as we can about the treatment, but I meant distribution in the statistics sense. When we are looking at a quantity that can take on various possible values, the distribution tells us how likely any particular value or range of values is. Let's say we want to predict x, the number of patients who will be cured tomorrow. The distribution of x specifies the answers to questions like, what's the probability that x is 6? Or what's the probability that x is between 4 and 8? So what is the distribution of x? We don't have enough data to be sure. A lot is unknown about this treatment. For example, is it more effective on young people than on older people? Assuming that each patient has probability 0.6 of being treated successfully, and that these patients are independent of each other, the distribution of x is called binomial 10, 0.6. Here's a picture of this binomial distribution, showing how likely each possible value is. Hey, that looks just like my hair. You can see that 6 is the most likely value, but that doesn't mean it's especially likely. Its probability is about 0.25. There's about a 90% chance, though, that x will be between 4 and 8. Breaking news, this is Jen, bimodality detected. Day 100 of our continuous coverage of the hypertangulosis crisis has brought us a shocking statistical development. We go to Professor Blitzstein for more. A few months ago, I suggested the binomial distribution as a plausible model for how many patients will get cured on a given day. Now, with much more data, it has become clear that the binomial model is inadequate. How so? Here's a histogram of how many patients were cured in a day compared with the binomial 10, 0.6 distribution. As you can see, they look very different. We have a case of bimodality. There are two peaks in the distribution. I will be working closely with Dr. Straithair to figure out why. So is everything you told us about binomials useless? There are many problems where the binomial fits well. This just isn't one of them. Even so, the binomial gives us benchmarks we can compare the real data to and serves as a building block for various more complicated models. Please, Professor, keep us updated. Dr. Straithair and Professor Blitzstein have been working tirelessly to unravel the mystery of bimodality. They're here now, live, to update us on the results. Joe and I have been poring over the data and have found an explanation we hope will not only resolve the statistical anomaly, but also let us improve the percentage of patients we can treat successfully. The conditioner comes from two different suppliers, normal distributors and Cauchy distributors. We discovered that the conditioner from normal distributors is far more effective than the conditioner from Cauchy distributors. On each day, it was completely random which supplier was used. On days when the conditioner came from normal distributors, the success rate was 80%. But for Cauchy distributors, the success rate was only 40%. The overall distribution is a mixture of binomials, not a binomial. Here's the histogram of the data compared with the mixture distribution. As you can see, the mixture fits much better than the binomial did. We're back, live on day 110 of our coverage of the hypertangulosis crisis. 
Koshi Distributors' stock price has plummeted in the last week as it has become clear that their quality control is far inferior to their competitor. In other news, Normal Distributors has just released a new formula of the conditioner that patients can apply at home instead of at a clinic with limited capacity. Professor Blitzstein is here to help us predict the ramifications. Hypertangulosis is rarer than you may think, possibly because the media have been covering this 24 hours a day. It would be much better to obtain good data on how many cases there are as a function of time. According to preliminary estimates, the probability of coming down with hypertangulosis tomorrow for someone whose hair is currently fine is only 0 .001. The number of people in discrete town with healthy hair is currently about 20,000, so we can expect about 20 new cases tomorrow. But what is the distribution? I'm glad you asked. Assuming the estimates I gave are correct, and that people come down with hypertangulosis independently, the number of new cases is binomial 20,000 comma .001. That's pretty unwieldy to work with, since calculations with it involve extremely large numbers like 20,000 factorial, which is about 10 to the 77,337th power. In general, the binomial NP distribution counts the number of successes in N independent trials, each of which has probability P of success. If we have a binomial NP distribution where P is small, it turns out that we can approximate it well with a beautiful distribution known as the Poisson. The Poisson has one parameter, usually called lambda. The probability of a Poisson of lambda, random variable equaling k, is e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k over k factorial, for any non-negative integer k. For the problem at hand, or should I say at hair, we can use the Poisson of 20 as a good approximation to the binomial 20,000,0001. That looks very pretty, like a bell-shaped curve. That's another story. But tell us, Professor, how many of the new cases do you predict will be cured? Let's assume that the number of new cases is Poisson of 20, and that they all try the new treatment with success probability 0.8. Then the expected number of new cases treated successfully is 0.8 times 20, which is 16 and the expected number treated unsuccessfully is 4. The distribution of the number of successes is Poisson of 16, and the distribution of the number of failures is Poisson of 4. Surprisingly, these two quantities are independent. With a Poisson number of new cases, knowing the number of successes tells us nothing about the number of failures. Thank you, Professor, for explaining all of this to us. Any parting words? We need good data and good statistical thinking in order to make good predictions. <laughs>